thyroid. Um, a patient with hyperthyroidism would present with what types of symptoms? So what about weight? Weight loss. Increased heart rate. What else? An increased blood pressure. Um, what about sleep? Insomnia. What about um, temperature? They could be cold or sweating. Sweating. Sweating because the extra heat generation. Um, what's a goiter? Swollen thyroid. What about the eyes? Protruding eyes. Um, and hyperthyroidism, what's hyperthyroidism typically associated with? Well, yeah, but what, yeah, Graves. <laughs> yeah, you're, I didn't make myself clear, but yeah, we typically call it Graves. That's the most common cause of hyperthyroidism, but yeah, you would see um, a low TSH. But, um, what is gluconeogenesis? <coughs> Making new glucose from amino acids. Where do we do it? In the liver. Good, in the liver. Hypoglycemia describes what? Low glucose. Hyperglycemia describes what? High glucose. High glucose. And you know what I mean, blood glucose. I don't think I'm not writing blood, but we're talking about blood. Um, diabetes mellitus. It's characterized by what things? So what about the glucose? Hyperglycemia, so increased blood glucose. Um, glucose also shows up in what? In the urine. In the urine. Um, and what about our urine? Polyuria. Polyuria, right, meaning increased urine. Poly dipsia because we're thirsty because we're urinating so much and polyphagia because we're hungry um hypoglycemia glucose in the urine polyuria polydipsia polyphagia type 1 <coughs> diabetes is also known as insulin dependent um what are the differences between type 1 and type 2 so which one is associated with obesity Type two. type two is obesity. Um, which one is is um, insulin dependent? Type one. Insulin dependent, and why? What happens to the beta cells? Destroy beta cells. Um, type two diabetes. What do we call that? It's non-insulin dependent, but what do we? It's associated with what kind of resistance? Insulin. Good insulin resistance. Um, which one's typically younger patients? One. Younger patients and typically no, um, ob and typically there's no obesity. I don't know, did I just hit something internal? Okay. Um, type one is typically younger patients and no obesity. Type two is typically older patients. Again, I say that with a big kind of caveat because more and more with the diet, um, we just have a really poor diet and kids aren't exercising enough these days. So we see type two diabetes in a lot more children than we used to. Okay. Um, and which one's more common? Type two. Type two is more common by far. Okay, good. Um, what's a glucose sparing effect? Perfect. So we free up amino acids or fatty acids and use those for fuel, right? For ATP production. Um, why would hormones do this? Like what's going on with glucose concentrations that we might need to do this? We don't have enough, right? Or for some reason we need extra fuel. So you could say like glucose is low. We don't have very much, so we need to save it for where we need it. Um, or you could say that nutrients are needed, right? So like stress hormone, like there's something going on and you just need to fuel your body. Um, I don't have anything like tricky about that. I just kind of want you to understand what I'm talking about when I say that, like, because we might have the glucose sparing effect. 
is going to be present in some of the answers. I just kind of want you to get what that's saying. Okay, so we have some time. Let's look at the chart a little bit. You guys overthink this a lot. All right, we got 15 minutes. We can at least make it through some of this so you understand what I'm looking for. you to know kind of like these key things about the glands and hormones. So however you want to organize it, it's fine. Um, and you'll obviously need to spread this out for the effects over here. Um, but this is just, I don't know, a professor made it like five years ago and I'll use it now. So the gland is over here, right? So first we'll talk about the hypothalamus. It's actually part of the brain, it's neural tissue, but it has glandular functions. So the hypothalamus, releases all those things, right? The hypothalamus releases growth hormone, releasing hormone. This is great because we didn't talk about it, it doesn't matter, don't worry about it, okay? So the hypothalamus releases growth hormone, releasing hormone. Where does it go? The anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary, that's the target, and that's where it goes. What does it do when it gets there? Release hormone. Release of growth hormone, that's the effect. Right? We release growth hormone. Done. All you need to know about that. Um, hypothalamus releases growth hormone and inhibiting hormone. Where does it go? The anterior pituitary. What does it do? Inhibit the release of growth hormone. Because we should all, you realize all of the releasing and inhibiting hormones go where? The anterior pituitary, right? Every last one of them goes to the anterior pituitary. And what they do is pretty simple, right? Thyrotrophin releasing hormone causes the release of <coughs> TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. Prolactin releasing hormone causes the release of what? Prolactin. Prolactin inhibiting hormone inhibits the release of prolactin. Um, corticotropin releasing hormone goes to the anterior pituitary and causes the release of ACTH, adrenal corticotropic hormone. Okay, so like you could make a flashcard for each of these, right? And it's pretty, and I would say it like the way that I'm don't, like, I don't know, it just, like, just say what's actually happening, right? Growth hormone releasing hormone goes from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary and causes the release of growth hormone. That's <clears throat> Um, so that's the hypothalamus. Then we have the pituitary gland, right? And when we look at the pituitary gland, we have the anterior lobe, and then down below, we'll see the posterior lobe. Don't worry about this direct effect and secondary effect. That's what I was telling you, like the books describe it in all different ways, um, and we kind of simplified it this time. So the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland releases growth hormone. Right, growth hormone goes out into the body. Um, what would you say it targets? Is there any one thing you can say? The liver and almost everything else. The growth hormone effect, it goes to the skin, the muscles, the um, cartilage, it goes everywhere. So growth hormone um, goes to, I would say the liver, and then I would really say like all cells. I'm not gonna find one tiny type of cell in the body and like be like, does it go here? Cause that's just silly, right? It goes pretty much everywhere. Um, growth hormone, so don't worry about that. What does it cause the release of from the liver? 
release of somato medins from the liver, and then it goes to all the other cells and it causes cell division, differentiation, and growth, right? Tells our cells to divide, to mature into whatever they're supposed to be, and to grow. Um, what else does it do? What about nutrients? Um, amino acids into okay, so it stimulates amino acids into proteins. What else? Um, okay, so know what that means too. So lipid catabolism means what? So triglycerides into fatty acids. Okay. Anything else? Okay, you could call lipid metabolism a glucose sparing effect. That would make sense, right? Just be able to analyze everything. Like if you know that it causes a breakdown of fats, then I, if I say lipid metabolism, you know that's the same thing. If I say glucose sparing effect, you know that's the same thing, right? What if I said protein catabolism? No, we don't break down proteins, right? What's the only thing that does that? Glucocorticoids. Right, good job. Um, okay, so also from the anterior pituitary, we release TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. What does that target? The thyroid gland. Um, when we look at the thyroid gland, what does TSH stimulate? So it stimulates the pretty much the whole process of making thyroid hormones. So kind of know what that means, right? It stimulates the uptake of iodine, the production of thyroglobulin right, and the production and release of T3 and T4. Again, this is not a fill in the blank test. This is multiple choice. So it should be pretty easy to look at the choices and know what makes sense and what doesn't. When it comes to TSH, if the choices have to do with the way the thyroid hormones are actually made, then yeah, it's probably true. Okay, if I say that TSH is going to the pancreas and causing their, no, that makes no sense whatsoever. Okay, so don't get like, I think people get freaked out because it seems like so much. Uh, but if you understand like the process that TSH stimulates thyroid hormones, and you understand how they're made, you should be good. If you know iodine's important, great. Don't tell me that chloride is important. <laughs> that iodide is what's key there. Um, prolactin. Prolactin goes to what? Mammary glands. Mammary glands. And it stimulates two things, right? Gland development and production of what? Milk. Development and milk production. Right, prolactin, prolactation. Um, ACTH, adrenal corticotropic hormone, goes to what gland? The adrenal gland. The adrenal gland. What part of it? The cortex. The cortex. Right, so that goes to the adrenal cortex. Um, and ACTH goes to the adrenal cortex and it causes the release of what? Glucocorticoids. And yeah, we always kind of forget, at least I always tend to like just nah, the androgens, but glucocorticoids and androgens. Um, melanocyte stimulating hormone targets what cells? Melanocytes, right? Melanocyte stimulating, stimulates melanocytes. Um, melanocytes, and what does it do? It increases the production of what? Melanin. That's an A there. Okay, it increases the production of melanin. You guys get the point? Like the gist of how this goes? Mm -hmm. Essentially, you can look at the slide for that hormone and say, okay, like, what does it do? And list the key things that it does. 
Um, let me see if there's any of these that are kind of confusing. Um, or cells producing, let's see. Okay, so here, I did not gray out where this is produced. You don't have to tell me the exact kind of cell, but there's a point to this, right? So the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland releases oxytocin and ADH. Where are they made? Hypothalamus, right? They're both, I cannot spell, hypothalamus. Okay, same thing here. ADH is made in the hypothalamus. Oxytocin, what is it target? Smooth muscle, where? So the guy like ductus deferens, Um, and what does it cause there? Ejaculation, come on people. Um, and what about in women? Smooth muscle in the uh, uterus for what? Birth, right? Uterine contractions during birth. And then the nipple, um, breast for what? Eject or release the milk. Okay, so prolactin makes you make the milk. Oxytocin allows you to release the milk. Antidiuretic hormone, again, hypothalamus. Well, we have like one minute left. Is there any one in particular that you guys are like, I don't know what to do for this? Like any requests? Oh, yeah. Yes, what's up? For um, Nora, sorry, it's called Pizzicolata. Pizzicolata? Pizzicolata, sorry. Um, so, Maybe I misread my notes, but it says it has an inhibitory effect on the production of corticotropin, CRH, in the hypothalamus, and ACTH in the anterior pituitary gland. Okay. And I'm confused because that isn't that what we would speak of corticoids are. Why would it inhibit itself? Um, okay, so those are downstream. That's not the exact same thing, no. So Google corticoids. So you've got your hypothalamus. Okay, your anterior pituitary, and then down here, your adrenal gland. Mm -hmm. Up here, you have CRH. That hormone comes here and causes the release of ACTH. Mm -hmm. ACTH comes here and causes the release of the glucocorticoid. So this goes out to all different cells and has an effect, right? If this is still in the bloodstream, by the time we make our way up here to the brain, uh -huh. the brain's like, I've got plenty, I might as well hang out and stop releasing it. So that would decrease that, and same thing here, that would decrease that, until you don't have it anymore, and then all of a sudden you start making it again. Okay. For cells producing, what would you put for T3 and T4? So, um, thyroid follicle. Okay, for T3 and T4, because remember, it utilizes the follicle cell and the follicle cavity. The point there was really that I wanted you to know the T3 and T4 come from the thyroid follicle, whereas calcitonin comes from the C cells, because they both come from the thyroid gland, but they're not coming from the same place in the thyroid gland. So just understand the difference there, that we've got the follicle and then we've got the C cells, which are two different hormones. PTH, chief cells, um, there's not many that you had to know the cells. It was just essentially, oh, the pancreas is one, so no beta cells versus alpha cells. Okay? It's really not as bad as you think if you know the overall point. <laughs> Insulin when we have high glucose. Um, um, oops, got a little dismissed.